Hi everyone, I am Nelio Ikerosa Jr. And in this video, we're going to understand the global migration is. And to know the effect of global migration. And to understand the reason why people migrate. And the solution, the solution to lessen migration. What is global migration? So, this global migration is a situation in which people go to live in foreign countries. So this is especially in order to find work. Most global migration is from developing countries to develop ones. I'm gonna show you some videos where global migration is being explained. Now let's talk about global migration. Global migration is the movement of a person or a group of person from one place to another for the purpose of relocating the residents either temporarily or permanently. When migration takes place from one place to another within the country, it is called internal migration. While the movement of a person happens toward another country is termed as internal migration. But why do people move? People migrate because they think about their safety, economic betterment, education, family, political conflict, and career. These are the push factors that are considered to be the cause of why people migrate. You can think of it like this. You are no longer having time with your family, and seems your relationship to them are already toxic. You work so much in a company but giving you a low salary, in addition to that, you have a terror boss that shouts and points out on everything that you do in your workplace. In this kind of situation, your career, social communication, environment, family, peers, and even your economic status is affected. And this is the thinking, I have to move to another place to make a better career, better boss, better salary for home, and better environment. So people mostly perceive that when they migrate to another country, they will have a better environment for their family, friends, better career, salary, and a better boss. And this what pulls people to move to another country. People are attracted to move towards a city or a country because of social, political, economic, or environmental matters. There are so many circumstances that may arise which may attract or force you to leave, but always keep in mind that you move for your own betterment. Throughout history, men and women have left their country of birth in the hopes of building a better life for themselves elsewhere. Globally, legal migration has grown by 50% in the last 25 years. Currently, 3.2% of the global population, or 232 million people, are considered to be migrants. The United States as a country has the largest number of migrants, hosting 46 million, or 20% of the world's total migrant population. Mexican immigration is particularly significant given that Mexicans are the biggest group of immigrants in the world. They head mainly to the United States, where 11 million Mexicans live. However, it is Europe as a region that attracts the largest number of migrants, with 72 million currently in the continent. The migration comes mainly from Eastern Europe, with people from Poland, Romania and Greece moving to the west of the continent. The countries receiving the greatest share of migrants are Germany with 10 million, Great Britain with 8 million and France with 7.5 million. Immigration to these countries has now far exceeded those to traditional immigrant destinations like Canada, Australia and New Zealand. In Africa, 19 million migrants move within the continent, but the number of crossings to Europe is steadily rising. The petroleum gulf countries have become a new center for immigration, where migrants from different parts of Asia have come to constitute majority populations in places like Qatar, 86% of the population, UAE, 70% of the population, and Kuwait, 69%. Illegal immigration, on the other hand, remains impossible to quantify. So why is there a, have a global migration? So because it is the higher income levels and economic growth that also leads to rise in international migration levels, explained by the migration slump, where migrants with increased income level choose to migrate because they can afford it therefore leading to a boom of migration nationals. How can we how can we reduce migration? So in terms of economic theory, this means that the trade and migration are sub substitutes. Countries with relatively cheaper labor can export labor. 
extensive goods or workers. Over time, differences in the price of goods and the wages of works should be reduced with fair trade, reducing emigrate pressures. The last century has brought an unprecedented shift in international immigration policy. With much of the developed world abandoning protectionist doctrines in light of political, social and economic opportunities that are provided by globalization. Long gone are the borders of the Berlin Wall, East versus West blocks and general isolationist sentiments which characterized the mid 20th century. In its place, Grand international political and economic unions have risen, such as the European Union, the UN, and an abundance of other transnational organizations. Importantly, this shift towards open borders has not been a linear transition. Global immigration policy is delicately balanced between the different and often conflicting socio-economic needs of states at the individual level. Migration has significant economic implications for countries in the 21st century. At the most fundamental scale, migration drives economic outcomes by altering the population structure within the host country's economy. In turn, this affects the host country's working age population, the dependency ratio, the participation rate, and the productivity per worker. As a result, more goods and services must be produced to support a growing population. At the same time, the volume of production in the domestic economy will increase due to the increased supply of workers within that economy. These are extremely important considerations as they are pertinent factors to the direction of gross domestic product, the unemployment rate, and the rate of inflation within the country or region. Therefore, driving the standard of living and the quality of life for all individuals within the host country. In today's integrated society, a country's political system can significantly affect the flows of migration to and from a country. Political systems may incorporate policies constructed by the government that discriminate against its citizens or citizens from other countries. Many migrants are driven to migrate from fear of being persecuted due to their beliefs or ideas, while many seek to migrate due to a lack of access to resources or infrastructure within their country. Despite the fact that policies can bring negative changes to migration, there is evidence that it can also encourage a natural population increase. A country's population growth rate can be fueled with the assistance of effective government policy. These key pieces of legislation have significant ramifications for permanent migrants, temporary migrants, asylum seekers and refugees. Government policy will continue to affect migration trends in all countries and regions across the globe. There are many people in countries across the world that feel that migrants are taking over and invading their country. The perception that migrants are a threat to their national identity is one that is commonly found in countries all over the globe. National identity is thought of as a sense of togetherness within a particular country, or how well people live in cohesion through their nation's culture, values and traditions. It is these cultural values and traditions that many think are under attack with the growing trend of migration. But while many people hold these fears, much research shows that they have often gone unfounded. 
Many academics see dual citizenship and permanent migration as a new way forward for many countries. Dual citizenship and notions of a borderless world actually promote the idea that one day no one will ever be foreign to anywhere and that we can all be more equal. Speaking culturally and in terms of national identity, it is evident that migration does affect a country. But what some view as a negative impact on their country's identity can actually be seen as a way to create more equality around the world. Dual citizenship through migration is not an overt threat to a nation's identity. We can actually use its effect on a country to our advantage and move forward as one global society. Forced migration occurs when people move away from their home origin to different areas within the country or abroad because of a real or perceived threat to life and well-being. There are two main causes of forced migration. Conflict-induced displacement occurs when the government cannot or will not protect their own citizens due to armed conflict or religious beliefs. An example of this can be seen in the Syrian civil war, where the government has refused to protect their own citizens. Disaster-induced displacement occurs when people are forced from their homes due to natural or man-made disasters. An example of this can be seen in homes being burnt down by bushfires. The impacts of forced migration can be devastating. People can experience social isolation and difficulty adapting into a new culture. Some forced migrants have trouble not letting go of their beliefs and values, which may bring resentment from the local people as they have failed to adapt to the local culture. So, what does migration mean for you?